some point is really that I don't want to talk about this today. This is an ad we did a couple of years ago, um, but I'm here today to talk about how we work and how it's a little bit different from, um, from most other advertising agencies. Um, I come from an ad agency called Forsman & Bodenfors in Sweden. Um, last week it snowed 50 centimeters in Stockholm, so it's a very different place from here. And we were very excited a couple of years ago when we were ranked as one of the best, or in fact the best advertising agency in the world on a top three list with Adam and Eve in uh, London and Dentsu Tokyo. Uh, the reason why we were very excited, well, many reasons, but one was the size, because we're a very small advertising agency. There's about 300 people in total. That's including all the subsidiaries. So in our ad agency, really, we're about 130 people, which, if you compare it to Adam and Eve, DDB, they're about 40 time, 42 times the size of us, I think. And Dentsu Tokyo, I think they're 160 times the size of us, 47,000 people. So for us, it was kind of a big deal to be able to be considered best in the world despite our size. And that's what I'm going to talk a little bit about today because we have been on that sort of top list of the world for the last sort of 20 years or so, um, doing very well. And, and for instance, in Cannes, we've been picking up over 100 lions uh, six Grand Prix this year, we took a Grand Prix. We have winning Grand Prix for the last three years in a row in Canon. I know it's a little bit of a strange way to start a talk. It's kind of bragging, but it kind of wants to just set the context of who we are and, and what we've accomplished, because it becomes a little bit more interesting to, to learn maybe how we work, how we've uh, managed to, to get to that point. So my name is Samuel Ackerson. Uh, I'm not I'm not the creative director, I'm an art director. Uh, in fact, we don't have any creative directors at Porsche Modern Boden Porsche. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about today, uh, how we've set up our company to become sort of as focused as possible at creative work by doing it a little bit differently, we believe, from, from most other ad agencies. We all want to do really great work. I think despite what industry we're in, we're focused on doing the best possible work. And, 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 and usually you say that you know, the, the key to doing good work is talent and really hard work. And I think that's true, for sure. But um, maybe even more important is, is the context of the surroundings you're in. I know that I'm going to do the best work possible if I'm in a place where I'm listened to, where my opinion is valued, where people who are probably better than me still believe in me when I make mistakes. People that I look up to uh, are willing to listen to me and, and constantly notice me. Because if you consider the opposite, if you're constantly worried and afraid and not really sure or confident by your place in the company, you're very likely to start focusing on the wrong things and become sort of nervous and scared, which is probably the completely wrong, wrong sort of environment to be in if you want to be creative and do something that is quite quite different. If you, if you want to be at a point where you sort of dare to, to make that leap and do things that are unconventional, you need to feel safe and at home. So that's the sort of environment we've been trying to create. Um, I'm going to show you an example of that, a piece of work we just did recently. Um, I know that the client was a bit worried when this script was presented. This is for a um, sports brand that we were launching. It's uh, started by Slavan Ibrahimovic, which is uh, the most famous footballer in, in sort of Swedish history. And when the client heard the copy to this ad, I know that he was concerned. He felt that the young sort of female target audience would probably not connect and that it would feel a little bit too aggressive and probably not the right tone of voice. But when the two young women who wrote this script talked it through, he understood that if they believed in it, then it was probably the right thing to do. And, and it turned out a little bit like this. The question is, how do we create an environment where two young creatives who just graduated from uh, advertising college a couple of years ago can be completely in charge of the launch of a new brand, setting up the strategy, the creative, the concept, uh, without a creative director? Well, there isn't really sort of a um, a manual, I don't think, but uh, it, there's kind of just one word that we keep coming back to, uh, which is 
responsibility. Everyone who works on any account and any client is completely and ultimately responsible for the quality of that work. They do not have anyone else to rely to on or, or report to. So if you have the, the ultimate responsibility, then it's also um, in your interest to make sure that it goes the right way. I think that's kind of the key to the way we work. This is um, the way we don't work, um, but it is the way most advertising agencies do work. At the top, there's a chief creative officer, there's the executive creative director, creative director, and so on and so on. In our company, it looks a little bit more like this. We don't have creative directors. Everyone is either an art director or a copywriter, and we all work alongside each other with no one reporting to anyone else, no one in charge of anyone else, no one in charge of anyone else's work. Everyone just works alongside and uh, together. We've kind of looked at the traditional way of setting up a, an advertising agency, but in fact, most sort of companies in any industry, uh, and it looks a little bit like this. Let me explain. The setup of an ad agency has looked the same pretty much from since, since the 1950s, really since advertising agencies were invented, where the idea of a company doing ads uh, were invented. And it's kind of created like this, the very best, creative is put on top, becomes the chief creative officer. Then the sort of best creative becomes executive creative director, someone just underneath. And at the bottom is the rest of the creatives, art directors, copywriters. And the ones down here, they show their work to the next level. Next level show their work to the level above. Which means that really your client as a, as a creative in this system is just a level above you. All you want to do is make sure that someone who has a fancier title than you likes your work. The actual client uh, doesn't really exist in your mind. You just want to make sure that your work passes the next hurdle. Hopefully it might get out there somehow, somewhere. We don't believe in that model. We kind of changed it completely around. On the top of the chain is the creative teams. The teams cre are creators, but they're also the team consisting of an account director, maybe a planner. It's a team of maybe three, four, five people. This team is completely and ultimately responsible for the work. They are the ones coming up with the strategy, the concept, the idea. They present it to the client. They're responsible of the budget. They are the ones making the work. And with them, we have different support functions. We have a finance department, we have IT people, we have designers, we have producers, and so on. And these people are there to make sure that teams on top can do the best possible work. That little dot down the bottom, that's our CEO, Eric. He's really just the ultimate support function. He's just there if everything else goes wrong. We don't have any other boss than the client or the task, the project at hand. We found that the best possible work never really comes out of the idea of pleasing someone else. The idea of trying to do work that will win an award trying to do work that will impress your boss, trying to do work that they will talk about online. That tends to not be the right way to go if you want to do something that is really sort of exceptional. So we need to take away all those distractions. And one way of taking that away is by taking away hierarchy. At least that's one thing we can control a system that isn't built for the best possible ideas. We've taken that out, made sure that creatives do what scientists or explorers do. They focus on the problem, trying to come up with the best possible solution to that problem, and nothing else. I'm gonna look at an example of kind of work that can come out of that way of, of thinking. How do we then control the idea, the quality of the idea? That's uh, ultimately and quite often the, the, the sort of the job of the, of the creative director. And, and, and that's an important job because someone's got to make sure that the, 
the quality of, of the work coming out is of highest possible rate. Well, ultimately responsible is, as I said, the team. Uh, the team makes the final decisions. And they also have to be able to sort of take care of every aspect of the work. So even though it's a fairly small team, we don't sort of take away jobs that are traditionally done in bigger ad agencies. It really just means that everyone has to work a little bit faster and a little bit better. We put sort of quite high pressure on everyone working in the ad agency in Forsman and Bodenfors. We know this, but we also find that people thrive in the situation where they are responsible for the work that they do. But we also have what we call the floor. Uh, you all have floors in your offices, so you can really practice the same model. It's very simple. The idea is that all the work that we do constantly is shared in the office to everyone. It comes from the sort of back, back in the days where, where really most work was print work, so you could print stuff out and put it on the floor and people could look at it. Nowadays it's a bit different, but most ideas still start off with a scribble on a paper or a few words on a paper, so we can put it on a wall on the floor and we can show it to everyone in the office. So not, you can't hide work that you're doing. Uh, you have to show it all the time and you have to show it to people you're senior or you're junior. You have to show it to everyone around you and you have to um, make sure that people sort of take, no, um, take their time and listen, just as you have to do the same yourself. I know that the team who did the next piece of work, they, they showed the, the work on the floor. We do it throughout, through, from idea stage all the way through offline edits and so on. And, and when they showed the, um, the offline edit to one of the senior partners in the company, of the, um, of the um, epic split film with Van Damme, he, he said they have to change the music. The Enya track is completely wrong. It's ruining the whole piece. Luckily, they filtered that piece of information because I think that was that piece of advice because I think that was kind of what made the ad. It was very important. Now, like a year or so later, two years later, they did another ad for, for uh, Volvo trucks and it looks a little bit like this. I think that's a very good example of how four or five people that are really talented become sort of even more talented and do better work than they usually would just because of this support system and, and, and the way that we work. This means that when we look into hire people, we're really looking for people that have a very broad range of, of skills. Um, that's tricky and difficult because we want the best positive possible people in every field, the very best possible creatives, but it's kind of not enough. We want them to be good at everything. They need to be entrepreneurs and, and really be able to run a whole business and understand the strategic part of it as well. This puts uh, sort of high demands and high pressure, I think, on everyone working in the agency. But we find that people become even better when they have the opportunity to not just be a creative or just be a strategist. It seems kind of ridiculous, in a way, to divide people's way of working into those two, strat uh, those two uh, sort of aspects. Uh, we find that the very best strategists are those who really understand the creative work. The very best creatives are the ones that are in many ways, strategists. In fact, it took quite a while for us to set up a, a planning department, or not a department, but to start working with planners in the agency, simply because we weren't sure how to use them. Now, planners are fantastic, very important, and we have great planners at the moment, but it took a while for us because we were so used to the creatives taking that responsibility. And even though a planner might be sort of working on the brief and understanding the, 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 the bigger scope of the, of the task, the creatives kind of start working already because we have that mindset and we try to have that mindset throughout. Another part of this way of working is that we have no departments. Um, everyone just sits together. This is some of my colleagues back in Stockholm. Um, the idea is really to just facilitate conversation, dialogue, make everyone feel more secure in, in, in 
what the whole agency does and feel involved in what the whole agency does rather than just focus on what they're doing themselves. We also don't have fixed creative teams. I think this is quite different from most other ad agencies where you have two creatives working as husband and wife, brother and sister very, very closely. We swap around constantly. So there's a fixed team on every client, but as a creative, you're probably working on three, four, five clients, depending on where you are at the moment. And that means that you work with different people constantly on those different accounts. Again, this really sort of helps building confidence. I think you know that you're not relying on a specific person to do the job you're doing, the work you're doing. Uh, but it also just builds a sort of an environment in, in an agency where everyone feels very involved in everyone else's work. You get to a point where any work coming out of the agency, you feel somehow a little bit responsible for and proud of if it's great, or you feel like, shit, that should have been better if it's not good enough. And you're not going to point fingers at anyone, and you're just going to feel like, well, together we can do this better. We should be able to raise the bar even further. We're going to look at another piece of work right now, and um, this is an example of how I think really good work can come out of a team that only just works together on one single account, on one single client. Even though they just do this one together and not sort of know each other super well the way you might do if you work in a different constellation. Um, they do really great work, and, and this next piece actually won a Grand Prix in, uh, in uh, Cannes a, a couple of months ago, a few months ago. So I've been talking a little bit about how we work and um, kind of let you in on the secret in a way. And maybe you think it sounds sort of, okay, straightforward, let's just copy that. And you're more than welcome to do so. Um, it is, however, very difficult. I think the collective system puts uh, very high demands on you as a creative. Um, first of all, you have to really you have to really leave all prestige aside. You you can't sort of feel that your work or the way you're working is somehow better or more important than anyone else's. You have to really come down on a sort of base level every day and. And, and, and be, be willing to uh, show yourself from a uh, not very flattering position. You have to show bad work to your clients. You have to show that you're not very good at what you're doing because all work is kind of shit in the beginning and you have to show that to everyone. Look, I don't know if this is any good. What should I do? You have to start there. And that's difficult. I think to, for anyone, um, especially maybe if you're a creative and you're, you're working on that sort of you're trying to work in a world-class level, then you can feel kind of embarrassed and shit about doing bad work. So that's hard. But you have to. You have to show all the stuff you're working on to your colleagues. And very soon, by doing so, you start realizing that it's the same for everyone. The people you might have been looking up to when you were 23, 24, starting in the advertising agency, the people who were then 10, 15, 20 years old than you, now you're working alongside them, and you realize that Every idea they have is also kind of not that great in the beginning, and it only becomes better because we're working on it together. So once those sort of walls are broken down, it starts becoming a little bit easier. You also have to be open to critique, criticism. You can't just say, well, no, I don't want to hear that. I'm not interested. You have to be quiet and listen and try to understand why someone is saying what they are saying about your work. Again, this becomes easier when you know that they're doing it because they want your work to become as good as it possibly can be. So be open to that. doesn't mean you have to change your mind. You are, like I said before, responsible, ultimately responsible for your work. So it's up to you, but listen. You have to listen. And this goes the other way around, too. You have to engage in everyone else's work. Again, this is difficult because you're busy, you're focused on what you're doing. Yet, our collective idea demands you to be involved in everyone else's work. How do you find the time? How, how do you find the energy? Well, you have to. Because they're giving it to you, so you have to give it to them. So, constantly, you have to work on what you're doing, but also 
literally walk around the agency. The floor is all there. It's on the walls. Talk to everyone. Find out what's going on. See if anyone's got a problem. See if anyone's feeling super happy about what they're doing and see if you think you can do it even better. Try to engage in the work and also speak your mind. Don't be shy or embarrassed about your ideas and thoughts. They might be wrong, they might be bad. I'm not saying anything else, but just say it. You really have to and do so even though you might be talking to the person that hired you, the person that's worked there 20 years longer than you. You have to speak your mind. This is the way we work, it's the way it works. Finally, two things are very important. You have to keep learning. You can't sort of get to the point where you feel like, well, I know how this works now, I'm done. You gotta constantly keep learning and, and be open to new ways of doing things. Uh, it might sound really obvious, but I don't think it is because you get comfortable, especially if you've done something right. You won that big award or everyone loved your ad that was on TV last week. You're done. Well, probably not. You've got to keep learning and you've got to get really sort of keep trying to do things differently from the last time you did them. You really have to be prepared to change your mind about what is the right way of, of working, what is, what is good work, because it changes constantly in our industry, in the world. If you work in advertising, wherever you do, what was true a week ago might not be, probably won't be true a week from now. So it really comes down to you to be prepared to change your mind. These are the sort of six lessons or rules in our manual. It's a fine balance between a sort of human and elitist approach to work. And it's really difficult. We want to be the best. We want to be the best in the world. Our ambition is to be the very best advertising agency in the world. That's our ambition. But we also want to be nice. We want to be friendly. We want to be the people who don't employ the assholes, even though some of the very best creators out there are assholes. Well, they're not welcome because we want to balance that up. And that's hard. We're working on it constantly and we do work that isn't as good as the stuff I've been showing you today, of course, as well. We're really trying to find a, a balance between good and bad. I'm going to show you one final example of a piece of work that I think it's a good example of this, where we've struck a nice, a nice balance between an elitist approach and a human approach, a way of trying to do something that really pushes the envelope and changes something, but doing so in a way that comes from the heart. It's a fun piece of work I'm going to show you today. Thank you. Um, yeah, that was the last thing I was going to show you. Um, I don't know if this was at all interesting to you, but uh, thank you for listening. It was, it was really nice to be in Madrid, so thank you.